job this morning is to introduce to you the two speakers that are going to present uh, their van uh, presentation from Mozambique. Um, uh, the first one is Timoteo Shaluku. Uh, Timoteo uh, is the van advisor in the Ministry of Health, uh, also known as the Human Control Tower. Uh, Timoteo uh, is, has, holds a degree in computer science and uh, uh, he started his career in the IT world, but he quickly realized that uh, he could actually apply those skills in uh, monitoring and evaluation. And so he joined the, the NGO world. He's been working, uh, he's worked with several NGOs, uh, uh, including uh, Village Reach in the past, uh, and then he went to other NGOs, but came back uh, uh, to take this position uh, that is funded by Village Reach in the Ministry of Health. Uh, he holds, uh, he's currently also doing his master's degree in uh, public health and uh, has uh, uh, also published uh, uh, several um, uh, uh, research papers. Uh, Dr. Ramos Mbowane uh, 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 is a medical doctor. He is a, a chief medical officer in, the, in Nyasa province. Uh, and uh, in his position, he coordinates and manages all operations uh, 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 in the ministry, I mean, in the province. And uh, uh, yesterday, I, I talked a little bit about Nyasa, and uh, Nyasa is one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, um, uh, provinces in the sense that uh, uh, when we talk about Van, because that is where I actually saw how Van can actually change things uh, in the leadership of uh, Dr. Mbowana. We have seen this uh, uh, province that was one of the worst uh, uh, performing uh, indicators in the country, uh, moving forward uh, uh, with improvements uh, because of them viewing data every month and uh, applying that uh, 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 analysis into their work. Uh, uh, Dr. Mboana um, holds a, a master's degree in public health. Uh, and uh, he has worked uh, for four years. His experience started working at the level of the district uh, with the Minister of Health, uh, also being a medical chief uh, officer there. And uh, he also uh, worked in the Department of uh, Public Health, uh, heading that uh, department as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Dr. Ramos Mbowana and Timoteo Shaluku. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> yes. So, I'm. Thank you to be here presenting the story of Van in Mozambique. English sometimes is challenge. My first language is Portuguese, so <laughs> sometimes you'll find me reading, trying to explain the slides. So I'm sorry for that, and I hope you understand. So in Mozambique. I'm sorry. So in Mozambique, with the technical supports of Village Reach, the Ministry of Health is implementing a dedicated logistics system, which stands for a, a DLS, I'm sorry, which stands for a dedicated logistics system for vaccine distribution. Uh, and generically refers as to informed push model. So this model, so I'm sorry. <laughs> So this model involves a dedicated logistic professionals who deliver vaccines from regional level down to a service delivers level. So to be able to implement this model, uh, each individual province has the authority to decide or not after a system design process has taken place. So this model is so streamlined, which also incorporates some van principles uh, provide us a clear data visibility, maintenance of right cold chain equipment, professionalized logistic workforce, and allows us to make decisions based on evidence. So here is the data flow for vaccine distribution of DLS. It's important to know that the DLS promotes the data collection analysis and use throughout the commodity distribution. So all the data that we have to make analysis has been collected at the service delivery point using a system called itself. So after that, this, the data can be visible 
using a table where we use this platform to produce reports. And after all, the reports are being sent to different levels. Where a small team of uh, professionalized EPI staff sit down and uh, revise, analyze the data to find bottlenecks from previous distributions. So after that, uh, they plan uh, the next distributions uh, to see what else can be used to improve the supply chain. So this is where the story comes from. This is Nyasa province. It is in the north of Mozambique. It's the most sparsely populated province in Mozambique with 1.7 million people, 16 districts, 171 health centers, and these dedicated professionals have to run a distance of uh, 4,583 kilometers per month to reach all immunization facilities for distribution vac for vaccine distributions. So. Uh, So it's important to know that when the dedicated logistics system was implemented in Yasa province, the result data was never, was, was not actively used, was not actively used to improve the supply chain. Uh, the DPS has, by that time, had limited data analysis capabilities, and we're, and we're not using, we're not making a, a full use of the data by that time. We can see the graphs here that shows us that the performance of, of the supply chain was, very, was, was bad comparing what, on how, how it is right now. So for some months, we, ha we don't have data. We don't have data. If you see December, 12, December 2012, we don't have data for that month. This was a result of uh, not analyzing data, not paying attention on the data that uh, the DLS was giving us. So, uh, together with the Village Reach, the, uh, the DPS decided to hire uh, a new capable staff that used to act as a human control tower by that time. So, this new staff brings together a capability for data analysis, coordinations, and start to sit together with the API team at that level to analyze the data that the system was providing us. So they start to find the bottlenecks from previous distributions and try to get solutions to apply in the next distributions. So with time, the supply chain face a market improvements and result, has a result of well-coordinated, well-prepared, based on data analysis. So the supply chain start to realize, recognize a market improvement. So we have, we can see that we have data for all, all most of the months in the, from the year of the 20, 2014 to September 15. So this map also shows us that uh, before we introduced this new human control tower in this province, the performance of the supply chains at the facility levels was mostly bad. So we can see the red colors that indicates uh, fac facilities. Uh, in, the, in the left map, uh, we tried to combine a different metrics, metrics uh, indicated metrics to evaluate the performance of ill facilities. Uh, for that, we use number of health centers visited, number of health centers visited on time, stockouts, full delivered, so far. So after we introduced this, this new human control tower in this province, uh, we start to see some improvements. And if you, see, if you can see the gradient color, that starts from red to a green color. In the right map, we can see that some health facilities start to show up shows some green color, which, which means that the performance has increased. So this was also a, a result of data analysis uh, within, the team or within the API team at that level. So uh, 
The DLS is a streamlined and efficient, and uh, once it was, in, once it was in, uh, introduced to the Niasa province, we start to see some improvements in the supply chain, specifically in the coal chain. So the number of non-functional non refrigerators start, started to decrease uh, where we were in 2014, we, re we reached over less, uh, a bit less than 10 health facilities with uh, problems in refrigerators. But the most important thing was that with data analysis, the DPS level, with data analysis provided with self, the DPS le level decided to include the CC technician, the cold chain technicians, to incorporate in the distribution strips. So this also allows us to have less non-functional refrigerators, because sometimes the, the problems in the health facility levels uh, require the end massive or technical support in terms of repair. So they decide to incorporate the CC technicians to, to these trips. So, sorry. So we, we, are, we are thinking on expanding the van activities to the, to, the, to the whole country. And we could identify an opportunity for that. So the Minister of Health, after a successful story of impl implementation of DLS in Niasa province in Cap Delgado, decided to expand this model to the, country, to the whole country. So we identified that as an uh, opportunity to expand the van activities. So actually we are, we are implementing DLS in over six, six over ten provinces in Mozambique. So, and we expect, we expect to go to the whole, whole country. So for that, uh, well, we count with a strategy that incorporates some van, van components. So we have the technology, now we are using the self that allows us to collect data. Uh, export the data to a Tableau where we can make analysis and make decisions based on that. We have people, me, the, the Van Advisor, uh, in the Minister of Health that I'll be supporting and transferring skills so EPI program staff in build, building capacity to use the different source of data and make analysis, triangulate data so far. And we also count with process that will allow us to improve the data quality in different levels. So, this is me. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm working in the Minister of Health in Mozambique. Uh, as, I, as I said, I'm trying to transfer all necessary skills in order to improve the supply chain. So, the Minister of Health have too many different data sources that at some times are not very well analyzed and people today sometimes don't have the enough capability to make analysis and make decisions about the available data. So I'm in the Minister of Health to transfer these skills to the APA staff. And I'm also, I'm also establishing a systematic data verification at the national level through a routine meetings to review and analyze the EPA information. So I am also support decision makings in analysis and recommendations based on, on evidence. And uh, I'm following up the activities related with data quality, and I'm supporting the expansion of self. So as a human control tower, I'm mostly based on analyzing, visualizing, analyzing data to make improvements. So visualizing data sometimes allows, allows us to know what's happening, what is happening in different levels. So with the self, exporting data to Tableau allows us to drill down to the very peripheral health facilities and find sometimes what's going on in case of one of the indicators analyzed are not going according to what, uh, on what was planned. And uh, we also performing improvements, improvement plans to give an effective response about the bottlenecks that we are facing in house activities. 
So uh, this is a, a bit challenge, but uh, we aim to expand the van uh, activities to the different levels, uh, starting to the national, go down until the health facilities levels. So how big constraints uh, is in the district level? Since uh, Mozambique has a lack of a lot of resource like computer to access data, uh, the data available and make canals with that. Hopefully the Minister of Health is planning to buy 159 desktops that will be placed in each district in Mozambique for the EPI programs. So we believe that that will, will help us to make that level start to use the data and uh, incorporate fine principles, which will, in last, my last case, improve the supply chain performance. Thank you. That's, what, that's all for now. Good morning, and thank you very much. Uh, I will now take this opportunity to say thanks to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for inviting me to join this conference. And uh, sharing what we do in Nyanza, I would say that uh, uh, introducing DLS in Nyanza has been a, a pivotal experience in the way that it has changed our paradigm in the way we have been looking at data and the way we have been doing things. I remember eight years ago when we, I started working in Nyanza, we could have uh, districts that would report uh, antigen coverage above 200 percentage. And the very same time, at the end of the year, those districts will go and experience measles outbreak, showing that the information was unrealistic and it was not reliable because they could just go and report things and they couldn't even understand what they were doing. But as we moved, we started to think how we could change that mindset and how we could do things better so that technicians that were reporting the information, they will be a couple on how to discuss the information they were collecting and how they can drive change for that. And that is what we have been seeing uh, five, four or five years ago uh, when we compare data that we have been collecting. Uh, uh, health facilities are able to analyze the information they collect and we have like regular uh, feedback from the teams that uh, uh, Dr. Shaluko has reported that move from Lishinga, Lishinga is the capital of Nyanza, and going back to the district in order to share what uh, the information that has been collected, what does that mean? And for province like Nyanza, though it's the largest province in Mozambique, it still face uh, many challenges. Well, we were able to do better uh, without uh, so much change in terms of technology, but changing the mindset, how the technicians think and how they can do better with the resources that are available. So uh, five years ago, when we look at the coverage of cold chain, that was below uh, 8%. Uh, 8 but working with Village Reach, Minister of Health, and the support from Gavi, now we have uh, coverage that is go for, uh, above 97%. So that shows that the way we do things now has changed uh, due to, uh, thanks to partnership and the way our technicians uh, react to the feedback they get from the province level. So uh, for province like Nyanza, we could see that working in a team, with the provincial team, when they move to the district level, joining by the maintenance team, they were able to pinpoint and see which districts were like lagging far behind in terms of technical skills and in terms of uh, freeze that were not working. And we were able to train those uh, local teams in order to be able to manage some problems at their level. So that has been a, a change in the way we have been doing things. And the other thing is, has to do with the feedback. Before, uh, we could just have uh, the EPI of, uh, official from the district level moving to Lishinga once or twice a year to get a feedback in uh, those provincial meetings. But now we are able to have feedback to the districts like a monthly basis. So that allows us to be aware of what's going on in terms of cold chain and in terms of uh, difficulties that districts do face. So we think that the, uh, it has been a, a good experience. That's why we are 
Now the government is there to scale up. But again, it has been a learning process because uh, it's not a mature uh, gain, so to speak. So we still need to improve because the districts are different. When we look at the province level, there are those who districts are, are doing far better compared to others. But uh, as we move, we are able to see uh, which approach uh, fits specific districts. So for that uh, is what we've been learning with this process. And uh, working at the province level, uh, I'm happy to say that when we compare to what we've been doing uh, six, seven years ago to where we are now, uh, the experience has been very positive and we aim to improve and uh, work so that we can have vaccines available to our children and they prevent disease at all levels. So this is what I have to share and thank you very much. Thank you.